Whoa, uh, that finale, huh? Boy, oh boy. Let's talk about it. What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, boy, oh boy, do we have a big one for you guys. We have another TV-related video, of course, a discussion-type video slash review uh, kind of, you know, style of video today. But this is going to be a little different than some of my other videos because, for one, the show in question that we're going to be talking about today is probably one of the most anticipated and one of the biggest shows of the year thus far. Coming into it, of course, as a major High Metro Mother fan, I got the shirt on for my boy Mike. And today, we're going to do a season one overview of How I Met Your Father. Now, if you're not familiar with this series, first and foremost, it is the standalone sequel slash spinoff to that of How I Met Your Mother. But more importantly, if you have not seen all the way through, we are going to dive into some major spoilers in this video. So I'd recommend watching the series first and then coming back to this once you're finished with it. If you're all caught up, stay where you are because we have a lot to talk about. The other thing with this video is that this is completely off the cuff. I have no script plan. I have no notes or anything like that. Usually I have at least bullet points or some sort of you know structure uh, for any of these styles of videos. Uh, or like a fawn script like I have going for my pilot project. But right now, this is like completely just off the top of my head. And I wanted to do it this way specifically because a lot of other YouTubers out there, a lot of other writers, a lot of other reviewers are going to be doing the whole in-depth MLA-style format, five-page essay-esque type video. And I didn't want to do that. I want to come in more casually just as a fan of not only How I Met Your Mother, but also How I Met Your Father, and just give you some baseline thoughts about what I think of the first season, because by no means is this definitively going to represent the entire show. That's the one thing that I really, really want to hammer home with this video, is we still have at least one more season, which is going to be twice as long as this first one was. So whatever happened in this first season is only the beginning to a much larger piece of the puzzle here. And that's what's interesting about this show is I think a lot of people coming into it were so dead set on assuming that How I Met Your Father was going to revolutionize the way that we saw the original show. Like it, it was gonna change everything about the show. When in actuality, you know, that wasn't the original plan to begin with anyway. It, it was never supposed to be a massive, massive like overhaul of what the original Himyum stood for. And that's, I think, a big misconception of this show. And the main reason why, I think so many people, initially at least, were disappointed in the series, was because they had these false expectations of what it was supposed to be. The way in which you watch this show is not the same way that you watch How I Met Your Mother. That was clear from the very beginning. I think a lot of people had this misconception about it that it was going to ride the line so closely that they were one and the same when they are completely different. And that's okay. It doesn't mean that one is necessarily better or worse than the other. I would say compared to where most people rank this first season, I'd say this is pretty solid, honestly. I think actually this is better than some seasons of the original How I Met Your Mother. And I don't have any shame in saying that because this is a really really well put together show if you watch it in that intended way and what i mean by that is there's two baseline camps of people who are going to be interested in watching how i met your father the first obviously are going to be how i met your mother fans and there are elements throughout the entire course of the show especially in the opening episode and the closing episode that cater to that audience you're going to have the flashbacks, you're going to have the cameos, you're going to have the Easter eggs, you're going to have all those little, uh, you know, I implementations that are going to satisfy and service that specific crowd. But the majority of the show, especially in the middle, where a lot of people were thinking that it wasn't up to quite the standards it set for itself early on, is that of a completely different crowd, which is going to cater to someone who enjoys laugh track style sitcoms even in 2022 that enjoys a more multi-cam setup 
right? Is ignoring, is ignoring the single cam tropes, doesn't have confessionals, doesn't have a mockumentary style to it, doesn't have a voiceover in the same way as a lot of other sitcoms nowadays, and is going to gear more towards a female audience in a lot of ways, including its lead, Hilary Duff, of course, but on top of that, a lot of the humor, a lot of the story elements going to gear towards more women. And so that's the one camp that I think a lot of people struggle to place themselves in. Because I would say, honestly, comparatively to other shows in that style, such as iCarly 2021, Mike and Molly, Two Broke Girls, Young and Hungry, How I Met Your Father is more representative of those shows than it is of How I Met Your Mother. Which I know sounds weird when you think about it, but when you really break it down and look at all the different elements compared to one another, it doesn't have as many similarities as the original as a lot of people assumed or were hoping for. And I think that is partly why so many people were disappointed in this series. A big part of that is in the characters themselves. Early on, there was a lot of discussion about who was the Himium equivalent in this group. Because there are a lot of characters in this show, and way more than that of the original How I Met Your Mother. So it's hard sometimes to draw those parallels because obviously you have Sophie, who is the equivalent of Ted, right? They're the lead, they're the hopeless romantic, they're the ones who are telling the story first and foremost. They are the center of the audience's attention. Obviously, that's an easy one to, to draw parallels to. Jesse and Robin, that's another pretty easy one and pretty you know concrete one to compare them to because they are the main love interest, they are the secondary leads, and most of the time, personality-wise, they are driven more on their career and trying to make it in the world that they want to pursue. Robin as a career woman working in news and Jesse as a wannabe musician trying to get past some of his vices from his past and trying to move forward with his own successes. So that's going to be our secondary leads there. But after that, the parallels start to get a little more gray as far as how concrete they are to the characters in the original How I Met Your Mother. And partly due to that is the fact that How I Met Your Father services so many more characters. I would say at minimum, there's at least 10 characters that you need to pay attention to in How I Met Your Father right from the get-go. And that's not even including Kim Cattrall, who plays the older Sophie and the son, who is off screen, which we'll talk about that a little bit later. The one thing that's very interesting about How I Met Your Father was right from the get-go, they wanted you to focus on these characters way more than focusing on the comedy aspects of the show. And that's another parallel that I think is drawn in a very interesting way to that of the original, because How I Met Your Mother, when it premiered back in 2005, was pretty interesting comparably to a lot of other sitcoms at the time. It was a lot more emotionally driven, it had more dramatic elements, it had more story elements in that respect. And what was interesting about the way in which How I Met Your Mother transformed the comedy space given the amount of time it was on air for is that sitcoms throughout that era, late 2000s, early 2010s, really changed the trajectory of what we saw. And How I Met Your Mother was a big part of why that was, in addition to other shows that also premiered around that same time, such as The Office and Everybody Hates Chris. Pretty much now, any major comedy show that gets made nowadays, whether it's stuff on network TV or in uh, on cable TV or on streaming services, all parallel stuff that was introduced 20 years ago. Whether it's the voiceover narration, whether it's a more family dynamic, obviously single cam comedies are still huge right now, and mockumentaries as well with those confessionals, like we're seeing now with shows, for example, like Abbott Elementary, which a lot of people would argue is one of the best comedies that TV in general has seen in years. And that's a very, very similar show to that of something like The Office, which premiered 20 years ago. So How I Met Your Father wants to obviously bring in some of those more emotional moments because that's what TV comedies look like nowadays. There just aren't that many shows that have this more 
multi-cam laugh track style to them anymore. And How I Met Your Father was really the only one throughout this year so far, or the last couple of years rather, that has tried to implement it in a big way. And one of the things as well that's interesting about that argument is the fact that it premiered on a streaming service. This is not a show that belongs on something like Hulu for multiple reasons, but the main reason being the audience that Hulu services is not the same audience that's going to watch How I Met Your Father. It's interesting that it was a big enough success to warrant a season two even then because these two things just do not mix well together. Hulu has a totally different fandom and a totally different type of style to it with its completely more mature adult sense of shows like The Dropout, Pam and Tommy that are going to be catering to a more mature audience and a more adult audience. And How I Met Your Father feels like a network sitcom that should have premiered 15 years ago. And that's what's interesting about this kind of collective of the TV world that we're living in right now is that something like this even exists at all. And that's a big part of why as well the series got so much cynicism thrown at it early on because it just didn't feel like a comedy that should have been made at this point. This was a big show that had years to develop itself. I mean, there were so many different attempts and pilots and scripts written and people contacted to make a spinoff to How I Met Your Mother starting back when the original finished 10 years ago. And now finally, after nearly a decade of all that work, we finally get something off the ground and it feels too little too late, most people's accounts. Let's go back to the characters for a minute here and talk about specifically why the characters in How I Met Your Father feel so much more distant than those of How I Met Your Mother. For one, going back to those parallels again, aside from Jesse Robin and Sophie Ted, there aren't really many other parallels to draw from these characters. There's two couples in the show, Sid and Hannah and Charlie and Valentina, that feel like they could be the equivalents to that of Marshall and Lily. But both of them have certain elements or certain aspects to them that just don't feel complete in the sense that you can draw those exact character traits to that of those original characters, in this case Marshall and Lily. There's also an absence of anyone that resembles anything close to that of Mr. Barney Stinson with his lovable catchphrases and his womanizing ways. And this is a very interesting conversation to have as well, which is kind of a bigger scope to the comedy landscape and to the art landscape. But the idea that Barney Stinson as a character is just not appropriate or is just not really seen as someone who could play well in the current PC landscape that TV is going through in the year 2022. And this is something that even Hilary Duff and Neil Patrick Harris themselves have talked about in various interviews and on Neil Patrick Harris's podcast in the idea of potentially bringing him in for a cameo or such. They both agree that it wouldn't be a very good idea because that sort of audience just would not like and would not approve of Barney's presence in a show set in this day and age, which is a very interesting idea because back in 2005, you could argue that a lot of those traits even then were considered taboo or considered a little inappropriate, but comedy as a whole has evolved so much further since How I Met Your Mother aired that it's kind of seen as just, you know, something that was done at the time, right? And we all look at Barney as you know, a TV character and nothing more. It's very unlikely that you know someone in real life that would go to the extremes that Barney does in the show, which is what makes him such a fun character because he's only someone that could exist on a TV show in a fictional place like that. So as far as the characters are concerned with How I Met Your Father, it feels a little more disjointed than that again of How I Met Your Mother. However, as I said at the beginning of this video, there's definitely an argument to be had that watching it in the specific way and watching it in a particular way separate of that, of the original show, can make this one feel a lot more unique and a lot more dynamic. And a lot of that comes in the form of the characters. One of the biggest pieces 
to the How I Met Your Mother fandom was always, who is Ted going to end up with? Of course, that's the whole gimmick of this show. In this case, the roles have been reversed to some degree, where we know that for one, one of the main characters introduced at the beginning of the show is going to be the father. And that's a very different kind of story arc to have than that of the original, which was, is Ted even going to end up with someone that we are introduced to right at the start? In fact, this is something that the Himium fandom has always loved to theorize about between the idea of Robin at the beginning or someone like Victoria at the beginning, who was initially proposed to be the mother had How I Met Your Mother got canceled early. How I Met Your Father does it in a more premature way where they're not thinking about what the arc in season eight or season nine is going to be because chances are it probably won't even get that far. Kim Cattrall, who I said earlier plays the future Sophie in this case, is the one on screen telling the story, which again is a different sort of parallel to that of How I Met Your Mother, which was the opposite, where we saw the kids on screen, but Ted's future self was tucked behind the camera. This is another piece to why How I Met Your Father, I think, is so engaging for a fandom and for like Reddit type theories, because any one of those potential characters that we are introduced to at the beginning, whether it's Sid, Charlie, Jesse, or Ian, all could potentially be the father, and they're all very different from one another, both personality-wise and physically-wise. They're all very different looking. So we don't know physically what the son looks like, and that's a very interesting move on their part. I thought one that was executed really, really well because of the fact that it keeps everyone engaged and guessing as to who the father could be. Now, as far as my own theories go, I'm not going to discuss that in this video because, again, this is only season one. So in season two going forward, going to be a lot more to that puzzle that is going to be revealed to us. So I will hold off on that for now. But what I will say is early on, about halfway through the season, I was having a conversation with my good buddy Mike. And we both agree that it makes sense for them to pick Jesse first at least to implement it into the series where they get together first before anybody else, which is what they did in the season one finale, which we're going to talk about right now. The story arc between Sophie and Jesse, I don't personally feel like is as strong as that as Ted and Robin was in the season one, but I do feel like the way that they implemented the idea of them getting together, realizing that it was not working, and then splitting up, and potentially now someone like Ian comes into the picture, was a much better execution of that than how it was between Ted, Robin, and Victoria in season one, Himian. The other thing with the show was the whole Drew finasco. I've seen a lot of people online really dig into this part of the show as far as they hate Sophie because she did Drew really, really dirty. Here's the thing that I've been watching TV for a long time. Drew was never potentially going to be the father. He was always going to be shoe leather with this show, regardless of what arc his character had at all. And that's the thing that, to some degree, you have to kind of suspend your disbelief on. Because knowingly so, going into it, that he's not going to be a main, you know, element to the, the story as far as if he's a potential candidate for being the father, you can kind of pass a lot of that off as just the show working its way up to what the important parts of the story are, which in this case was Sophie and Jesse ended up getting together. Because again, like... Drew's character arc was not bad by any means, but it just didn't have the same pull to that of any other character on the show. And that was purposeful because they knew going into it that he wasn't going to stick around for very long. He was only in like half the episodes. And I like Josh Peck in the role, don't get me wrong, but knowingly again that he wasn't going to be a main part of the show, you can kind of pass that off that that isn't really something you have to pay attention to as much or as uh, you know, intensely as that of the other main characters on the series. 
Now, of course, the other big part of the finale, which has gotten the fan base absolutely buzzing about, has been that of the surprise cameo of Robin Trubatsky, of course, played by Kobe Smolders from the original How I Met Your Mother. This is interesting because looking at it from the perspective of who potentially from the main cast would have come back and which character would have made the most sense to come back first, at least, I think that Robin was a good choice because as we've already talked about, probably wasn't going to be Barney, wouldn't make sense. Ted would have been too obvious, I feel like, because he is the main character and their stories are too parallel, at least for now, that it would have been just too phoned in, you know, it would have been too forced. So I would have ruled him out. And I feel like Marshall and Lily, they would have brought them back together, which they may do still potentially. Um, but having one there without the other, I don't think would have worked out as well. It, it wouldn't have felt right to only bring one back. You really want to see them together on screen. So I think Robin, you know, once you kind of eliminate all the other possibilities, makes the most sense. I think that Robin's cameo was well done. I think Kobe Smolders played her really well. She was well written. She felt very genuine as Robin Scherbatsky, just like she was on How I Met Your Mother, which was great. But... I do have mixed feelings about the fact that the fandom specifically is so much more invested in this episode than anything else that the show's already done. And again, I think that circles back to the idea that watching it as a pure How I Met Your Mother fan, getting to see those characters, getting those, um, you know, Easter eggs and, and those elements that are catered exclusively to you kind of blinds from the idea that this show has its own other story arc going on and all these other characters that aren't even remotely a, a, a piece of the How I Met Your Mother puzzle. And I think that is very disappointing to see everyone lunge on the idea that this episode is the best, and there's a pretty obvious reason why everyone thinks that, and completely disregard the rest of the show and what else is going on because they're so infatuated with this idea that these two have to be the exact same thing. And that's my one biggest criticism of the way that the fandom has handled the release of this show. This is not to replicate How I Met Your Mother. This is not to be the, the next big How I Met Your Mother. This is How I Met Your Father. This is its own show with its own characters and its own story. And I feel like most people that understand that are also in that camp that they're not watching it fully because they're fans of How I Met Your Mother. I know people personally that are really enjoying the show that have never seen How I Met Your Mother because it has elements that could draw you in even if you're not a How I Met Your Mother fan. And people like that have told me that they don't necessarily think that this season finale is better or worse than any other episode of the show because that Robin cameo means nothing to them. And so that's the piece of this whole conversation that is the, the toughest for me to get behind is this idea that like if more of those cameos come back or if more of the, the characters from the original come back into it, then the show is good. And if they don't, then it's not. Right, that's that's kind of the, the black and white way to look at it. When in actuality, at least I think, that the whole show has been very good from the start. I like the pilot episode. I like the finale. I like pretty much every episode of this show. I don't think there was one weak link here. In fact, my favorite episode of, this, of the series so far was The Good Mom. I think that episode was awesome with uh, Sophie and her mom kind of reconciling and you kind of get to know more about her and the background that she came in through. I think that episode was fantastic. It was very emotional, but it was very funny at the same time. And if How I Met Your Father does continue in the direction that the fandom wants to go, I think this is more of a vanity project than anything else. I think this is more of just an excuse to bring some of these people back and have them on screen for a few scenes to uh, cater to the How I Met Your Mother fandom. And it'll feel less like a genuine passion project and more like a cash grab. We talk about all the time reboots and sequels and prequels and all these things that none of us want them. And this is the most direct way to show 
that this is not what you want by hyping up the rest of the show, which is doing its own unique thing, has its own unique voice, and not just saying that the parts with Robin or whoever else are the only good parts of the series. And if that's how you feel, then you're entitled to that opinion. That's totally fine. But just understand that there is a whole nother group of people that has no affiliation with How I Met Your Mother that also enjoyed this show. And trying to look at it from their perspective, I think, is a much, much better way to view the whole show as, as a whole because you get the bigger picture of it all. Now, one other thing that I've heard people say in general about the show or just, you know, about the comedy landscape as a whole is that comedies just aren't funny nowadays. We, we kind of referred to that a little bit earlier when we were talking about how emotional the show is. Personally, watching a lot of those other shows that I mentioned earlier, a lot of those dumb laugh track shows like Your Two Broke Girls and Young and Hungry's and iCarly 2021, I think all those shows are funny, and I think How I Met Your Mother is funny. I think there's a lot of interesting running gags here that are just stupid, but they're they're goofy in the best way possible. You know, they just make you laugh, and that's what you want to see when you watch a comedy. Obviously, humor is super subjective, so you do not have to like the comedy in How I Met Your Father. If you don't, you know, that's your opinion. That's totally fine. But I think, personally, that the show is very, very good, and there's a lot of other comedies out there nowadays that are just not to this level. I think that the writing is super sharp here. The fact that they did get a lot of people from the crew to come back as far as like the writing staff goes or, you know, being producers and such is going to helm the series in a particular way that's going to guide it to more of a familiar territory than uh, other shows out there nowadays. And a lot of that is going to come in the form of the writing when you have, you know, characters who are going to face similar challenges or face similar problems like you saw in the original How I Met Your Mother or characters that are going to have similar connections or, or going to have chemistry that feels very similar to that of certain groups or certain pairings from the original How I Met Your Mother as well that worked back then and they work now, you know. I think that Valentina and Sophie as the two leads there, as far as like, you know, friendship goes, they work well. All of the guys together, Sid, Jesse, and Charlie, they have all really good chemistry the same way that Marshall, Barney, and Ted did in the original How I Met Your Mother. There's a lot of similarities that you can uh, draw there as well that feel really, really good to an audience that are just looking to uh, you know, kick their feet up and watch something for fun as opposed to get invested in this really uh, you know, heavy-handed emotional toll that the show is also going to provide to you. And you can make an argument that maybe that aspect of it is a little more heavy-handed, but I would say personally, as someone that watches a lot of sitcoms and a lot of sitcoms in this style where they try to do the more emotional moments, that How I Met Your Father is pretty successful in balancing those two extremes. It has a lot of really funny parts, and it has a lot of parts that are very sad and, and make you feel things, too. Outside of that, I think that was everything that I wanted to cover. There's probably stuff that, of course, I didn't get a chance to say here because, again, I'm just doing this off the cuff. So if there was stuff that, um, you know, I forgot to mention or something, I'll probably post uh, some more videos related to How I Met Your Father in the future. Of course, I'd love to know what you guys have to say on it. If I had to give it a score, like just on a, on a simple 1 to 10 scale, I'd probably say around a 7.5 to an 8, I think is a fair mark for the first season of How I Met Your Father. Uh, you could think that that's, you know, higher or lower than where you place it. Totally fine. I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments as always. And what group are you part of? Are you part of this group that is watching it purely as a How I Met Your Mother fan? Are you a part that has never seen Him Yim that's coming into it as a fan of those other shows like Mike and Molly or Two Bro Girls or something like that? Or are you someone in between that's kind of a little bit of both like me? I love How I Met Your Mother, of course, but I also love a lot of those other shows as well. So I'd love to hear what uh, camp you reside in in that regard as well. And as always, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe and like it if you did enjoy it as well. And we will see you here in the next one.